Today I'd like to show you in this video a, a rather unique mystery computer, as I will call it, that I obtained at a swap meet in Minneapolis in uh, the early 1980s. Um, a guy sh pulled in, pulled out three micros, put them on a the table. This one, uh, an Altair, and a Sol 20. And uh, I was fortunate enough to get this one and the Altair, which I'll show in another video. Uh, this particular computer is an Intel base uh, 8008 uh, system. Uh, very, very elaborate case that has been built and the unit is all interfaced. It's, it's a pretty unique system. Let's take a little closer look at uh, the workmanship in this thing. Uh, there we can see the name tag. It's called the 8-bit microcomputer system. And I think the company that made it had their name tag right there, and it was gone, unfortunately. I don't think the guy wanted to know which company it came from. And uh, lots of lights, switches up on top here. The case is made out of translucent dark red plastic. And you can actually see right down inside uh, the case. Uh, There, you can actually see inside. Uh, this is the main CPU unit, and uh, it's hooked up to another smaller unit, which is an EEPROM programming unit. Uh, has a cable on it to allow it to an RS-232 interface with a teletype. Let's go around and take a look at what's called the EEPROM programmer. Again, thick translucent red plastic. And you can burn chips. Uh, there's even some light up LEDs underneath here that must give some information while it's programming. Very, very nicely built, well crafted system. Obviously done in a full fabrication shop at some company. Alright, I think that this is probably one of the very first 8-bit systems ever assembled. Uh, I'm sure there's a few others, but uh, if there's a handful of them, this would be in it. And let me show you why I think that is the case. Uh, first of all, let's sort of establish a little bit about the system. Uh, Zbigniew Stachniak from York University in Canada has done extensive research on this type of computer. And uh, we've exchanged notes and uh, he's looked photos of this system over quite carefully and we've arrived at some uh, interesting conclusions. Uh, he says that this is called a Proto PC, is what he calls it. It's called the Intel Sim 8 01. It was introduced in 1972. Is a low-cost hardware aid for program development. Uh, the SIM 8-01 was not just the first commercially available 8-bit microcomputer, but became a blueprint for the design of the first generation of commercial and hobby general purpose microcomputers. So it's a pretty uh, amazing system and kind of the, the forefather of all of our others that came out. Um, Let's take a look at the timeline of when these computers were made. Uh, in April of 1972, this particular system was announced by Intel, who had, who had originally developed the 4004 microprocessor and then turned it into an 8 bit or an 8008. And so they developed what they called the SIM 8 01 featuring the 8008 uh, CPU with an MP7-02 EEPROM programmer, that's the smaller e board uh, over to the left. And they announced it in April of 72 and in April it turns out that a guy from Canada was working on building a computer 
uh, from Microcomputer Machines. It's near Toronto. And uh, he uh, was a friend of Robert Noyce's. Went down to Intel and said he'd like to probably use this board as the basis for what he was doing. So he made arrangements to get one of the very first ones assembled. And it was shipped on May 23rd to him. Uh, so that was kind of the very earliest uh, of these boards that was produced. Uh, Intel has, would the case be in most situations, made revisions to this CPU and board and in June of 72 they came out with the first revision of it and it was still called the SIM 8-01 but now the CPU was changed to an 8000 8-1 and the programming board re remained the same but now the manual included information on how you would hook these two boards together and interface it to a teletype apparently that wasn't in the first uh, manual so in June people would know how to take these two boards and do something with them to put them together to make them work together in November the uh, next revision came out, major revision. Uh, again, the 8008-1 CPU was used, but now it used the MP703, which I have in this system, and it also had what they called the MCB8-10 system interface board. That was released in November, and that was a board that allowed you to put these two together into a system and, and work more easily with it. So, let's take a look at a few of the features of, uh, of my system. Let's start with the actual SIM 8 board. Um, the SIM 8 board uh, is revision 156, which is the earliest of them. I guess they, they put this on the back of the board. It was dated on the front, 1972 and it contained the 8008 CPU which was the earliest of the Intel um, 8008 chips. Now this one didn't last very long. Uh, it came out late in 71 and by June they'd already changed it to the 8000-1 uh, made changes to it. This is an extremely rare chip. Um, the, I have a few chip collectors that would love to get their hands on this thing because very, very few of them exist. Um, also, the EEPROMs that were in this system are extremely early. The, um, the one on the left is called the 1702. The one in the middle is the 1701 and that's even earlier yet. That is the very, very first uh, EEPROM ever developed. Uh, very rare. It's got gray traces on it. Uh, again, I have a collector in Germany who would love to have this thing. Uh, and then there's a 1702A chip and it turns out that having all these different chips in here has helped me figure out why it is I have a very very early CPU board, probably one of the very first ones produced, and why I have the November issue of the uh, EEPROM programming board and I think I have the the uh, answer to that. Okay, let's go on with the SIM board here a little bit more. A couple more things. Uh, showed you the different EEPROMs that were on it. There are several dated Texas Instrument chips on the board. They range dates from June of 71 until March of 72. So that kind of coincides with it being one of the very first issued uh, CPU boards. And it's very similar. In fact, um, Zbigniew compared my photographs of my board to the one that's, that was shipped in uh, May of 23rd of 1972, which is in a museum at York University. And he said the circuitry is identical. The chips and the date codes are about the same. Uh, so it's very, very similar. It's definitely one of the very first issue boards. Alright, let's go on to the MP703 EEPROM programming board. That's the little unit over there. And that was announced in November of 72. 
Uh, and the, uh, the dates, the Texas Instrument dates, kind of support that. Uh, November of 71 to August of 72, so yeah, I could see this being a November uh, board. It has a serial number on it, 159, which is very early, I assume. But, the MP703 supported a new, faster ROM PROM chip called the 1702A, which there are a couple in this system, but it wasn't used with the 1701s or 1702s, which were used with the earlier versions of this board. And I think what happened is that board got replaced later on when it became available. Originally, they had an earlier one. In fact, uh, so again, the difference between the MP702 and the MP703, the O2, dealt with 1701s and 1702s. The O3 dealt with 1702A chips. And notice I've got all three types in here. And lo and behold, I went and I dug out one of the pieces of literature that came with this thing. And it actually was notes on how to program the MP701, which was even an earlier board. So I think this had a very early, early uh, programming board with it and was later on changed. Okay. So, the final thing that I looked at was the system interface. And what that is it's a board, it's called the MCB8-10, that allows you to plug these other two boards into it, interface it all to a teletype, and it's ready to roll. And on the November uh, manual, it actually had a picture on the cover of that particular unit, the way it would look assembled. That bottom board down there is the, uh, the interface board. And here's a couple pictures of ones that uh, were sent to me by a collector that he had showing um, what the system would have looked like after November of 1972. So, what I suspect I have here is one of the very first units that was ever put out and John Titus, who developed the Mark 8, and I've communicated on this and John says, yeah, it's one of the earliest boards. And he said that looks like they've recreated the functions of the MCB 8-10, but without all the LEDs and, and, and uh, for output ports. And he talked a little bit more, we've talked before on this, and so it's like, you know, it's an elaborate system, a lot of work put in it, but it doesn't make sense that it would have been built after November when this functionality could have been bought and it could have just been plugged in. So, I think what we have here is a system that was probably built in somewhere between June and November of 1972 and there were a number of early computers that used this particular system as the inspiration uh, in 1972 and into 73, there was one called the Sac State Computer that Bill Pence in California put together. The Micro out of France in 1973. Uh, the MCM 70, which is the one up in Canada, started in 72 and actually released in 74. Uh, John Titus did the, uh, the uh, Mark 8 in 1974. And the Selby 8H by Nat Wadsworth came out in 1974. So this was the system that inspired all of these machines and a few others and uh, who did this one? I don't know. I assume it was done here in the Minneapolis St. Paul area. It might have been Control Data, Honeywell, Sperry ran Univac, but whoever did it put a tremendous amount of work into it very very early and uh, my guess probably built in the summer, early fall, 1972, which makes it definitely one of the very first 8-bit microcomputers ever assembled. So, hope you enjoyed it. If you got any questions, get a hold of me. Thanks. Bye.